Um, let's see. Now, <clears throat> you all know, here's some, here's uh, an, I'm going to bring out some important things in the review here. Number one, what are, what are the two significant points about sovereignty that I've repeated before? What are the two significant things about sovereignty? That what what is characteristic of a sovereign? No accountability to a higher level. Right, that's one. The decree of the sovereign is the decree of the sovereign makes law. Right. Very important. When you when you sue somebody, you make your decree of what the law is that you're saying got violated the laws that you're claiming that they broke. They have an obligation to you of some kind. It could be an obligation to pay you money or it could be an obligation to not punch you in the nose. But whatever the, the obligation is, an obligation to do or an obligation to not do, whatever that obligation is, you decree what the law is. So, so that's one point that you have a a court of record, or not a court of record, I meant to say sovereignty has these two features. It has, there's other features too, but those are the key ones. Okay, no accountability to higher authority and uh, the decree of the sovereign makes law. Sovereignty is an important aspect of what we do here. You've got to have your sovereignty. Now, in order to make it work, you've got to be the plaintiff. So, I assume that you all know how to do a, a lawsuit. Now, this, this uh, session we're having today is not a session on procedure. This is a session on concepts. I'm giving you the concepts with which to do procedure. We'll, we talk a little bit about procedure, but the emphasis is on concepts. Now, there is a company called, uh, a website, <coughs> a website called jurisdictionary.com. J-U-R-I-S, as in Sam, dictionary. All one word, jurisdictionary.com. And they sell a course, I think it's for $219, a two-day course, it, and it's written by an attorney. It all has to do with procedure. Yeah, he, he goes into procedures, he talks about motions, he talks about evidence, talks about all kinds of stuff, basically he gives it around a picture. He, he says it's a two-day course. I suspect it takes longer to study it. But nevertheless, he's gone to the trouble to give you the, the, the generally acceptable court procedures that apply to all courts. So if you take that procedure-wise and add to it the concepts that we have here, you've got a real powerful combination. I haven't focused on jurisdiction. I haven't focused on procedure because he has. No point in reinventing the wheel. Yeah. And, and it's very reasonably priced. I want you to lock down in your mind you those two things about sovereignty. This is extremely important that you always keep this in mind. That you're, you're not accountable to higher authority and your decree makes law. <clears throat> also, I want you to remember what a republic is. You're in your sovereign capacity. Now, if you're sovereign, you do what sovereigns do. You have your own court system. You have your own uh, laws. You can do all that stuff. The, the thing that keeps you from getting too extravagant is the fact that if you do decide to enforce your laws against someone, they can always call a jury who can sit in judgment of your laws. You don't re remember that what is the number one definition of a court? A stage. It's a stage upon which you put a show. So if you're going to go in and buck the traditions and buck the, the, the customary way of doing things, all that does is generate trouble for you. Because, you know, uh, there was this gentleman in Germany, his name was um, uh, Goethe, I think it was, was. He was a philosopher. And he said that there's nothing so fearful as ignorance in action. Okay? As ignorance in action. 
There is nothing so fearful as ignorance in action. Oh, okay. And uh, and so you go in there with your superior knowledge, <laughs> supposedly superior, and these people don't know what you do, and they just might go into action. <laughs> and you might find yourself behind bars, all because you knew something they didn't. And you knew that it didn't matter whether or not you wore a hat. But they told you to take the hat off, and you didn't, so you went to jail. <laughs> okay? I suggest that you don't challenge the people around you. Remember this. There's a very important rule. In the land of the insane, the sane man will be adjudged insane. Yeah. Okay? That's true. So understand who's around you and... and, and you know, you've you got to put a, a proper show on and you've got to take into account that you're not actually free even though you think you are because you can get these kickbacks or blowbacks, I think is the new term. Well, well basically, you had to put up with either their lack, lack of knowledge or their choice to ignore what they knew. Oh, yeah, they did. That happens. Well, anyhow, um, so keep in mind, as I said before, what sovereignty is. Keep in mind that the, that the number one rule about courts is that it's a, a show. You want to put on a good show. And even though you're right, if it's a bad show, then don't do it. Don't claim it unless it's really, really critical to what you're doing. Um, keep in mind what a court of record is. And that uh, it's proceeding according to the common law and don't allow the judge to make any decisions. Okay. Now you're, if you're the sovereign of the court, you're, you're the, the plaintiff, if the judge makes a decision, all you do is you object. We have on this disc, what do you do when you are in front of a judge? Okay? This is very important. See, when, when you have your paper, when you're in your court process and you've done your counterclaim, when... If you're in front of a judge, the reason you're there is because somebody, either you or the other side, is asking the court to do something. That's called a motion. Okay? And so the judge is going to try and make a decision. If it's your court and you have a court of record, he cannot make a decision. He's prohibited. But that doesn't mean he, he won't do it. And so you, when you're in front of that judge, you want to be able to keep things under control and and under control in the sense that even if he doesn't do the right thing you're not lost okay so uh, you have to be the plaintiff as I said before now here's here's what happens I'll just read off this this article it's, it's short and, and sweet when you are a plaintiff and one of the people of the United States or a state in a court of record, the judge has no power to make a decision unless you grant it to him. The tribunal, which is either you or a jury, is independent of the magistrate and all judges in California are magistrates. When in court, there is no need to argue your case. All of your arguments should have been made in the preceding paperwork. The only reason for a court hearing is to give the court an opportunity to ask questions of the litigants to clarify any points. Anything you say in court is considered a novation to your papers on file. Your verbal actions override your previous papers. That's why you don't talk in court. Now, get this. Somebody makes a motion. That's whatever it is that he wants. He says, I want this from the court. The other person answers the motion from his side. And he introduces his own peccados, whatever. And then you have a third chance to come back and say whatever it is, but your answer, your reply to his answer is narrowed down to the issues that were raised in his, his paper, okay? That's your typical three-paper set. Everything you have to say should be in those papers. Basically, you spoke on paper and the other side spoke on paper. That's your speaking. The only reason for a court hearing is so that the court can ask you questions. That's it. A court doesn't have to have a hearing at all. 
And in fact, if you go down to Florida, down there in that, those courts, you put your motions in and you get your rulings back. You never have a hearing.